Good morning. We'd like to welcome anyone and all who are worshiping with us today who are not members. If you would fill out the visitor information card. If you are a member but your information has changed, also fill out the card so we can have your updated information. Please check out our Facebook page and our website for the most up-to-date information on events and other information that are coming up. Ash Wednesday is coming right up on February 22nd. We will be having a prayer walk and imposition of ashes with multiple times available to accommodate varying schedules. Check out the newsletter for the exact times. We hope you will join us for our Lenten book study, Final Words from the Cross by Adam Hamilton. Books are available on Cokesbury, um, and there is going to be meeting Monday nights, 6.30 p.m., starting February 27th here at the church. Are there any other announcements? We are starting choir with our cantata. Um, this is an event for Good Friday that the choir works very hard for. If you are interested in joining choir, now would be a good time. Um, we meet after church on every Sunday. All right, let us prepare our hearts for worship. Oh, it's the welcome. I always try to <laughs> skip that. Good morning. Welcome to Kirkland First United Methodist Church. I am Pastor D. Mead. I am thrilled that you are here today. As you can see, we are bringing in the light of Christ, so we decided to do it in a big way this morning. And um, welcome to all that are online. <laughs> welcome to all that are online with us, um, our Zoom people. If any of you have friends that are watching this on Zoom, our Zoom people will be able to watch us very soon. Um, I have to admit, my husband is right now looking for my phone that is supposed to be on my desk in my office, and it was in my pocket. So I sent a friend to go and give it to him in my office, and now he is hooking up our Zoom. So that will be coming on pretty soon. So let us begin with the way we should all in celebration. God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. Hannah. You are the light of the world. We lift up our voices and sing praise to God. Live your praise with justice and love. We lift up our lives with compassion and mercy. Let us enter God's house as bearers of light. God's light shines in us. All right, we are going to sing from the United Methodist Hymnal um, 206, I Want to Walk as a Child of Light, verses 1 and 2.
You may be seated. Here is the prayer of confession. Compassionate God, forgive us. When our Our compassion compassion runs runs short, we we worship worship in word, but but not in truth. When we side with the powerful rather than the poor, shine into the dark places of our lives and into the shadowy depths of our souls. Loosen the bonds of sin and selfishness within us that we might loosen the bonds of injustice and oppression in our world. Amen. Here these, uh, we now, will now go to silent prayers of confession. Now hear these words of assurance. When we accept Christ's gift of grace, God releases us from the yoke of sin and sorrow. Once released from the bonds of sin, we are living vessels of light. Rejoice, sisters and brothers, and shine for all to see. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory Glory to God. God. Amen. Amen. Our response is hymn number 70. For children's time, children of all ages are invited to come forward. Daniel, you can join me up here or you can stay down there, whichever one you want to do. Okay, so we are going to read scripture today that talks about not hiding your light. And it talks specifically about not hiding your light under a bushel or a basket. And the light that it's talking about is not a candle that we um, talk about today, but it's talking about an oil lamp, and this is a replica. And what they used to do is they would pour the oil in the big hole, and then they would put a wick, like you carry, in the little hole, and then they would light the wick, and as there was oil in here, then the the wick would burn here, and so it would be like a candle, but it would be in a clay jar. You would hold it here. There's like a little holder here. Well, they had really fancy ones. This is just a nice little replica that I actually got from a VBS program, which was a real cool one. But And so they would carry it around, and they had big ones, and they had little ones. But so this is the the light that they were talking about. And so what Jesus is saying is, if you've got a light, but he was saying that you are the light, that you don't have this light that's from God, and you don't spend precious money on oil, and then you walk around and you put a a basket over it. So you don't get a candle, you don't light the candle, and then you put a basket over it. Does that make any sense whatsoever? No. But you're going to lose a basket, definitely. <laughs> and maybe your house. And does it really make sense to light a, a candle or a, an oil lamp and then to put a basket over it? No. So if God creates you and God spends all that time and energy making you bright as a light and putting you into the world to shine as a light, would you put a basket on your head and darken that light so that you couldn't be used in the world? No. So that's what 
what Jesus was saying. Don't darken your light. Be amazing. Be fantastic. Be everything that you should be. Go out in the world and shine. And that's why we got all the lights in here, because today's whole sermon is be amazing, be fantastic, be everything you should be. And one of the things I'm going to be talking about today is that we should be that bright and amazing light so that other people know that and they want to join us and be part of this great group. I know it, it's kind of like dying out of there. My light is flickering. I know, sorry. But the other lamp, it doesn't, it doesn't have oil because it's, it's being safe. We're in a safety mode because we don't want to burn down the church. Yeah, we have this thing. There, there's safety conscious people in this church because we don't want to burn down the church. <laughs> We're doing that. So, okay, so let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you that you have put the Holy Spirit into us so that we are bright and light in this world. And we ask you to help us attract others by our light so that we can show them that they have the light of God in their lives and we can be a welcoming presence and help us to be welcoming to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Today's scripture reading is from Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 20. You are, the salt. you are the salt of the earth, but what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp, then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine for all to see, so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Don't misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not even in the smallest detail of God's law, will disappear until its purpose is achieved. So if you ignore the least commandment and teach others to do the same, you will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's laws and teaches them will be great in the kingdom of heaven. But I warn you, unless your righteousness is better than the righteousness of the teachers of the religious law and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Thanks be the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. So for the next three weeks, I'm actually preaching from the lectionary, which is... Um, the three-year cycle of trying to preach through the entire Bible. And it does a pretty good job. But what's really cool is it's three weeks of sayings from Jesus that we're going to use to talk about Jesus' love and how that is actually used to be welcoming. And today we're going to talk about being the light of the world to be welcoming. And Jesus calls us to be the light, to be the salt, and how to do that. You were baptized. You were given the light of God into you. And he tells you to be the light, not to put a basket on you, not to hide it, not to push it down to, like the army used to say, be all you can be. To go out into the world and to Spread that mission and ministry into the world. And you have to do that in a way that is so much more now. I spent yesterday at a, a seminar. And it was one of those seminars that I've heard hmm, 70 
95% of it before, so it was kind of a refresher, kind of new stuff. But one of the statistics that was one of those statistics that you kind of, which one's making you crazy, Connie? This one? Okay. How do I do it? Okay. Anything else? Okay. <laughs> when you have people holding up papers, you know you got to do something. The statistic that really just saddened and made the room go, oh, is that 80 to 90% of our community does not attend worship on a regular basis. It's not 50% or 60%. It's 80 to 90% of our community does not attend worship on a regular basis. That means that we have, I'm sorry, 85 to 90%. That means that we have 15 to 10% of our community attending worship on a regular basis. That is a whole lot of people out there that is not. That is a whole lot of people out there that we need to be talking to. We literally are back to first century times. We are literally back to the times when Jesus was telling his disciples to go out there and be the light of the world. We are literally back to the times of bringing the church to a world that needed God's word because they didn't have it. We are back to a time when we don't have people that know the Bible stories. You can't just say, well, you know, when Job was suffering. Because they don't know about when Job was suffering. You can't tell the story about, well, you know, when Jacob was wrestling. Because they don't know when Jacob was wrestling. You can't just say, well, you know, on the Sermon of the Mount. Because they don't know about Jesus in the Sermon of the Mount. That's not a taken. That's not a given anymore. We have a world out there that needs to learn scripture. We got a world out there that needs the light of God in their life because they also don't know. The promise of hope, the promise of love, the promise of compassion. They don't know that when you are hurting so bad you can't stand it, that there is a God that will be there to hold you. They don't know that there is hope when you feel hopeless. They don't know that there is life everlasting. They don't know that there is something more than this world to hope about. They don't know that there is something more than the life that they're stuck in. When we talk about the Sunday morning smile, you know, we laugh about that in my family. That even when everything was going just poopy in my family, you'd get up and everybody would be like, bleh, 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 bleh. but then you got to church and you could pull it together because that energy was there. And then you might go home and you might be back into that. Bleh, 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 bleh. But you had a couple of hours of people that were there for you. You had a couple of hours of people that were like, yeah, I know. Your daughter is making you crazy, and your husband, we'll come over here, and we'll talk about Eric for a while. That's okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll come over here, and we'll talk about Eric. We love him too, but yeah, that Eric. Mm, yeah, we know. <laughs> you had those people in your life that are there. We have all of those people in this community, 85 to 90 percent of our community that don't know that feeling. 85 to 90 
50% of that community did not walk in those doors this morning and receive that, oh, it's so good to see you. Who in here did not walk in this room and get that, oh my gosh, it was so good to see you this morning? 85 to 90% of that community did not. Those are the people we want to reach. Those are the people that we want to show the light of Christ to because everybody in this room has that light of Christ. And we want to share it with them. This community has a light that is insanely bright. This community is something that wants to just blind the world. And I know that because I've only been here for seven months now, and I've heard stories that just amaze me. You didn't do a good neighbor fund because it was a missional thing that a church did. You did a good neighbor fund because Donna Turner saw a need in the community, and she started cooking so that people in the community had the funds that they needed for items that they needed to survive. And from her making meals each week, each month, and your church supporting that ministry, we now have a vital, a vital Good Neighbors Fund. A vital Good Neighbors Fund that is so vital that I am now helping people when they need food, when they need gas, when they need Bills paid so that they don't have utilities turned off. When they need medication, so that they have medication, so that they don't have illnesses come back. You did that. Because one woman saw a need and you said, yes, we need to do that. Not because we should do that, but because one woman saw the need and you supported her. That is the light. You have a knitting group in this community that knits your little fingers to the bone because you saw that there were veterans in Rockford that come to a drop-in center that are cold because there's homeless centers in Rockford at the Rockford Rescue Mission and the other Rockford missions, the uh, Carpenter's Place, and there are people there that need people that there are the, um, oh, what is the, the Women's Center for Abused Women, that they go and they've got them and their little kids. So they make these cute hats with little animals on top of it and they bring them in so the kids not only get what needs to be warm, but they get really cute stuff. So that the moms, when they're in trauma, get to see their kids' faces light up. That's not giving them necessities. That's giving them love on top of it. That's you. That's you guys giving the light of Christ. You do that. July 4th, you don't just send out pamphlets and stuff. Oh, no. You give all those kids sugar highs with your floats <laughs> to make sure that they have enough candy. I mean, what is it? 10,000 pounds of candy that we throw out? And then, because you wanted to do more, you got in trouble from the lions because you decided that people needed free water, they shouldn't have to pay an arm and a leg for water, so you got kicked out of the park. Now that, you know you're being a good Christian when you get kicked out of some place. You are rocking it as a Christian. You got kicked out. So you moved across the street, and you set up your refreshment center across the street. You, got, you even got palm trees, for goodness sakes, at your oasis. And so you're across the street, and you give away free water and a place. You even have extra chairs now for people to sit down. And who sat down this year? Teenage boys. That's who sat down. They're like, this is the place. They had teenage boys sitting down, hanging out with Lori this year. Just talking. And what did they talk about? The church. They're like, yeah, we'll just talk here and hang out and talk about the church. They needed a place to decompress for a while 
And this was the safe place to decompress, and Lori just let them do it. They drank our water, they talked to Lori, and they decompressed for a while in the safety of our church door. That is the light of Christ. We do that. We do that. We need to be doing it more. So I'm hoping that we think of more ways to do it. And we just start piling up more ways. So I would like to maybe have an idea board or an idea box. Come up with some ways. Let me know what you want to do as that wonderful brain that you have and the Holy Spirit starts working with you. I want us to start praying about how we want to be the light of Christ, the salt of the world, and be a more welcoming church in this community so that we start being that beacon. And that means we're going to be outside. One of the things that the speaker said that he did in his church was their greeters were literally on the sidewalk. Small town in Wisconsin. Their greeters were on the sidewalk waving to cars. He said he thought it was the stupidest thing he ever heard. He didn't know why they were doing it, but he was the new pastor at the church. He thought, you want to wave to cars? Go ahead, wave to cars. He didn't think it was going to hurt anything. Go ahead. He said, greeters in the parking lot, he thinks that's a great idea. Greeters waving at cars. So he was just about to shut that program down because he didn't think it was doing any good and he didn't see any reason for it. And he had a new person come into the church. And at the end of the worship service on the Sunday, he went up and he greeted her. He said, oh, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate you coming. What brought you to the church? And she said, you know, drive by your church almost every Sunday, and there's always this person waving out there. And she said, I just kept driving by thinking, that's a strange church, people waving outside. And she said, and then one month I lost my job. And she said, there was that person waving at me. She goes, oh, I waved back. And she said, a couple months later, my husband left me. And she said, I drove past your church, and there was a person waving at me. And she goes, I waved back. And she said, and then I came in. He said, I never realized that she thought that person waving at her was that touchstone. And she didn't realize it until she realized that that person waving at her was something she looked forward to every Sunday. Now, I don't know how many lives those people waving touched. And honest to God, that was the only story he brought to us. So that might have been the only one that brought in. But we have an interesting group of men that meet at Marathon. How many people do they talk to on a Sunday morning? How many people do they connect with? And I'm not saying that they should change and start with, you got to come to church. I'm not saying that at all. You guys do your work and you do it well. I'm saying that is a connection that's showing the light of Christ because they're just there. I'm saying that's how we should be doing ministry, out in the community, in different ways, in different places. Take what you're doing And just make sure that you are open and honest about, I attend church. I'm a Christian. Show your Christian light. Don't hide it. Don't hide it under a basket. Don't proselytize. You're going to hell unless you go to Kirkland first. Don't do that. Just own who you are. And invite. Invite. And if you invite somebody to church, follow that invitation up with, if you decide you want to come, I'll meet you at the front door. 
Because the 85 and 90% that don't come to church now see coming to a church like visiting someone's home. And they won't come into somebody's home without being invited at the door. So if you're going to invite somebody to your house, make sure you meet them at the door. Better yet, ask them if they want to be picked up. I wouldn't want to be picked up. But I would like to be met at the door. Show your light. I love this congregation. You are bright. You are beautiful. Don't hide that light. Show it to the world. Go in peace. Go loud. Go proud. Amen. <laughs> Let's go ahead and stand and sing together our hymn of response. Together we serve 2175 verses 1 through 3. Now is the time that we come together to lift up our prayers of joy and concern. Sadly, I must um, tell you if you have not already heard that Jan Thoroughby has passed away. Um, I do not have any information about um, um, anything about any um, uh, when a funeral or a memorial service will be um, had. I don't think there's any type of information in the, the paper or anything either. So um, when further information, when I would receive it, then I will let you know. So let us be in prayer. Lord, we lift up um, the Thoroughby family. They have been through so much in this last year. We ask you to be with them as they mourn the loss of Jan and continuing to mourn the loss of Mark's father. We ask you just to be with them during this deep time of grief. Jan is with you now, and she is healed from all of the pain that she was in. She has no more disease. She is just fully healed, and she is at peace, and we know that. We lift up all of these prayers, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. prayers. We also um, lift up prayers for Madeline Bram, who is doing well as she continues with her therapy. And um, we lift up prayers for Ray Meyer as he continues in his care. We say, Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Um, we lift up prayers for Ron Johnson, who is recovering very well after he had um, a heart procedure. They added two more stents, 
and he is doing very well. He's home from the hospital now and recovering. And Linda says that they are very grateful that it was a pinched nerve that sent him to the hospital that had nothing to do with a mild heart attack that he had already suffered. And she just gives all grace and um, glory to God that it was a different symptom that sent him to the hospital that they found something that was serious that happened. So we say, Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. We just send prayers of celebration that David is with us after being in the hospital this week and that he is recovering and doing so well. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. And um, Marion, do you have something that you wanted? No? Okay. Um, Lord, we continue to pray for Philip as he is um, recovering and going through therapy. And we ask that you continue to strengthen him and to heal him. We lift up Philip, Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayers. prayers. Are there others that would like to lift up prayers at this time? Then, Lord, we continue to pray for those with long-term illnesses that um, need our prayers of support and our prayers of strength. And we know, Lord, that you walk with them as they go through this continuing journey. Oh, Lord, in your mercy, hear our hear prayers. prayers. And Lord, we celebrate that Terry is with us in worship today. What a joy that is. And we just lift up prayers of celebration as she continues to recover. We say, Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Lord, we also pray for all those that um, grieve at this time, whether they are grieving the loss of a loved one, the loss of a job, the loss of home, whatever their grief is, we pray with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Lord, we pray for all of those that are not worshiping today. We pray for many to come to Christ. We pray that that is the way that they um, worship because that is the way we are called to worship and we believe that that is the, the, the true way. But we also believe that there are those that truly find you through um, Judaism. We also believe that there are those that find you through Islam and other ways. Whatever way that they find you, Lord, we, we ask that we, they find you in a, in a good and wholesome way and that they find a way to worship you, Lord. Lord, we, we believe that people should come to you and that they should worship you on regular. And we ask that we find a way to bring them to Christ and that we can be a welcoming church and we find a way to do that that makes us feel good and that we can show your light in this world. We ask that your light be shown to those that are needing it. We also ask that your light be shown to the world as a whole that needs it. Lord, we lift up all of these prayers as we say the prayer that Christ taught us together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will the ushers please come forward for the offering? You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears.
have given us. And we ask you to bless this portion which we return to you. Bless it and use it in this congregation and in this community and in this world for your, your will to bring, bring about your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. In the United Methodist Church, we have an open table, which means the table is open to all who wish to participate in the Lord's Supper. You do not need to be a member of the United Methodist denomination or in Kirkland First United Methodist Church. You do not need to be baptized, and we welcome children to participate in communion. Christ welcomed all to his table and Kirkland First welcomes all to our table as well. Let us lift up our hearts to the Lord. It is a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into breath, the breath of life. We, when we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. At the right time, you came and dwelt among us as one of us, bringing good news to the poor, healing the sick, right, raising the dead, sharing his table with the unrighteous, and teaching the way that leads to life. By your incarnation, life, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made the new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night of your betrayal, Lord Jesus, you broke bread, blessed it, broke it, gave it to your disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the supper... You took the cup, blessed it, gave it to your disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the sins of forgiveness, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here to worship you and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Through, Through them, make, make us, us be the body, body of Christ, Christ, alive in the world, until we feast again at your heavenly banquet. Amen. This is the body of Christ, broken for you. This is the cup of salvation poured out for the sins of the world. The gift of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Okay, so you are going to take me this. I'm going to do this. And everybody's going to be a little covered in this. Christ table. Soul is flying through. 
repeat the prayer after receiving. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself for us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give others for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please remain sta or stand, sorry, please stand for the hymn ascending. Shine, Jesus, shine, and let's do this verse one and two. Nice and happy. I read the verses for the wrong song. I read the verses for the wrong song. 